Hello and welcome to another session. In this video, we are going to learn what is OPC UA. Before we understand OPC UA, it's very, very important to understand why we need OPC UA. To understand that concept, it's important to understand the earlier version of OPC, OPC Classic or OPC DA. OPC UA concept is easy. We would gradually build on the concept. If you watch this video till the end, you would be 110% clear about this topic. Before the existence of OPC Classic or OPC DA, if your Allen Bradley PLC, which you can see right here into the picture, want to talk to one HMI here, there was only one way before OPC DA itself. If they want to talk to each other, your HMI, this HMI should have a specific driver for that Allen Bradley PLC. If you want to communicate your HMI with that Allen Bradley PLC. Similarly, if you got another PLC, which is from Siemens, if you want to communicate that PLC to that HMI, you should have a specific drivers of that Siemens specific model. So this is a big challenge you can see right now, because you know, there are a lot of brands, Honeywell, Yokogawa, ABB, you got G, you got Siemens as well. So there are a lot of brands and they have different models as well. So it's really tricky and it's very tough to keep a record of every possible brand and their models. And to fix that problem, actually we got OPC DA. In OPC DA, now you got a standard interface, which is your OPC server. If you got that guy and if your OPC client which is your HMI supports that OPC if your Allen Bradley PLC also supports that you don't need to worry about the drivers in order to communicate with Allen Bradley PLC rather you are relying on a standard technology OPC so it's just like instead of keeping a record of every possible driver now you are relying on a standard interface which can talk to any other vendor now if you got a siemens plc if you want to communicate that specific plc to hmi also you don't need to keep a record of that specific driver in your hmi rather you are relying on a standard interface and through that standard interface you can share your data from a plc to hmi so now you got an opc da technology which is one of the very helpful thing which actually helps you to communicate with different vendors. OPC Classic always uses Windows environment. Your OPC server should have a Windows and your OPC client, which is your HMI, should have a Windows. Otherwise, they can't use OPC Classic. Before defining OPC, it's very important to understand what is COM. COM or Component Object Model is very simple thing. It's a technology introduced by Microsoft to share the data between different applications running on the same system. But what if, if you got two different systems and they are on a network connected with each other, there is one application running here and one application running here. And if they want to share the data with each other, they would be relying on a technology which is called DCOM or Distributed Component Object Model DCOM. Now we can easily define what is OPC. OPC is OLE for process control. Now it would be very easy for me to define OLE. OLE is object linking and embedding. OLE is actually based on Windows COM standard. If you talk further about it, OPC is essentially using COM. If you talk about communication within the system, but if you talk about communication on a network, your OPC actually relies more on DCOM technology, which is distributed com this is a mechanism how different applications actually share the data in windows environment there's one problem in opc it only supports windows environment and that's what actually lead us to the next thing which is opc ua so opc ua is actually next generation of opc technology which is more secure as compared to the opc classic because opc in opc classic security was not a big consideration at that time so opc ua is a more secure open reliable mechanism for transferring information between servers and client it provides better security and a more complete information model than original opc da 
OPC Classic. In OPC UA, under the hood, all the data that is actually exchanged between two systems is encrypted. Your OPC UA actually can communicate anything from, from simple downtime status to massive amount of highly complex plant-wide information. So this OPC UA technology is independent of the platform. OPC UA actually sports in Riot. It, it sports Apple environment. It also sports Linux plus Windows environment. Now let's talk about what are the component in OPC architecture. Everything starts from the field connection. Your OPC technology supports all the field connections like your instruments, mod bus, scan bus, profi bus, VFD, PLC, DCS controller, everything. And that guy, what is this OPC server? OPC UA server is a software that implements the OPC standard and thus provides the data to all client applications. OPC servers are actually provided by different companies like you have OPC server from a Kefware, you have OPC server coming from a different DCS vendors like Honeywell. When we talk about the field data, it actually comes to your OPC server, which have all the information of this, of the data coming from the field. And then you got in OPC clients. What are the OPC clients? OPC, OPC client software is any program that need to connect to the hardware such as HMI, SCADA, Edge Server, UA Expert, Raspberry Pi, MES systems. So these are all options that you have, okay? So OPC is much better than OPC Classic because in OPC you have information models. In OPC UA, you have information about everything units, flow set points, instrument configuration parameter, range, sensor types, all that sort of information is provided in OPC UA information model. So let's talk about what is OPC server again. So it's a software that provides the data to all client application and your OPC client is any software which needs that data, simple. And what happens actually? Your OPC client would request the data and your OPC server would respond back to that OPC client. And what sort of actions are possible? Read and write. So OPC UA server requires certificates to ensure trusted communication between OPC UA clients. By that way, you are making sure the security feature as well. Data in OPC UA communication is encrypted. There is a big misunderstanding that exists Nowadays, that OPC UA or OPC is a protocol. It's not a protocol, it's a standard. This platform is independent of any specific operating system. It sports Linux, it, it sports web technologies, cloud and IoT devices. It have a complex information model that grabs all the properties along with the values like units, set points and instrument configuration parameters ranges and engineering units and it also auto populate okay that's also one of the feature that we have in opc ua it's and it's scalable starting from you know one device you can use it to the million of devices it is scalable so in opc network you got an opc client and you got an opc server opc client would request the data from a server and server would provide that information back to OPC client. We have a lot to talk about OPC, but we are going to cover that in coming session. If you would like this video, for sure, this would be a big indicator that you are loving this content. And it would actually motivate me to come up with new video on OPC UA. We will definitely have a practical session where you would understand how actually OPC UA software itself work, how to do that practical stuff that is gonna be in line. With that, I will conclude today's session. If you like this video, consider hitting the like button. If you haven't subscribed this YouTube channel, consider subscribing. Until next video, take care and Allah Hafiz.